Hi, welcome to uh, our second uh, version of Field Trip Fridays. My name is Brad Bertelli. I'm the curator for the Keys History and Discovery Center. And today we're going to talk about the origins of Isla Morada. I want to say again that if you have questions during any, any time, during the presentation, feel free to type them in and Aaron will let me know and we can answer those questions on, uh, on live for you. Um, so, what we're going to talk about is how Isla Barada came to be. This was not the original community on Upper Matacumbi Key. Uh, Matacumbi is actually one of the oldest place names in all of South Florida. It was first uh, used by Pedro Menendez. Slight pause for traffic uh, for, by Pedro Menendez in 1573 when he wrote a letter to the king of Spain asking for permission to kill the local Indians because they were very hostile. But but um, that being you know that that being said and written down that 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 made Matacumbi one of the oldest place names in all of South Florida. Um, Upper Matacumbi, Lower Matacumbi, uh, known on old charts in the um, 18th century and before as New Matacumbi and Old Matacumbi. Um, but the original, the original community was Matacumbi, and that was kind of between the Hurricane Monument, where we were last, last, uh, last Friday, and the Green Turtle Inn the restaurant. Um, that's where the Matacumbi Grammar School was, Matacumbi Methodist Church, both on the property of what's the Chica Lodge today. And that was what the old timers, the pioneers, that was their community. Now, in 1906, during construction of Henry Flagler's Oversea Railroad, uh, William J. Crome would become the chief engineer of, of, the, of the railroad. And during his time as he was you know, creating the, creating the right of way for the for the railroad, he came upon this really special area um, on Upper Matacumbi Key here. Uh, we're on the corner of De Leon Avenue and the Overseas Highway. And he would purchase 15 acres of Upper Matacumbi Key from the Russell family. Uh, he paid the, the astounding price of $735. Uh, that breaks down to about 49 bucks an acre back in uh, 1906. And he would plat 22 lots and then he would create the town site of Isla Morada. And for those of you who've been here for more than a decade, uh, the building that is today, the Dollar Tree, used to be called Town Site. That was a grocery store. And it was called Town Site because this was the actual origins, the very first Isla Morada. And what's interesting about Isla Morada, other than the fact that it's today it's the sport fishing capital of the world, in, in a news release in, in, from 1907, he even states back then that the new town site of, of Isla Morada has come up, uh, has been established on Upper Matacumbi Key, and it's going to be a great place for fishing. Even in 1907, they're, they're already advertising this as a location for, 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 for fishing. Now, Isla Morada is, um, not the Purple Isles. That mythology uh, really comes in 1975 when a travel writer uh, is talking about the Spanish conquistadors coming and noticing and, and calling this the, the Purple Isles. That is a myth that um, really uh, doesn't come into local in, into the local uh, um, advertising until after 1975. The actual name for Isla Morada means island home. Isla is Spanish for island, and then Morada is Spanish for home or dwelling. Now, Chrome probably took this word from a 60-foot uh, schooner that was built on Plantation Key um, that was known as the island home. And before the railroad, schooners and boats were the only way to travel between Miami and Key West to, for mail and for, uh, you know, for, for staples like you know coffee and flour and sugar and things to uh you know st everyday staples so he's probably familiar with this schooner of the island home and it may have been his way of paying tribute to the changes that he knew were would be coming to the island with the establishment of the uh, uh henry flagler's railroad now daily service in the upper keys would become uh, a staple in the community as early as 1908. 
I know the train would reach Key West in 1922, I'm sorry, 1912, uh, but as far as, as early as 1908, the daily service between Miami and Knights Key was, uh, had already been established. Now what's also interesting about this particular location is that this was the site of the Isla Mirada train depot. There were actually two depots on Upper Matacumbi Key. There was the Isla Mirada depot, which was right here, and then the Matacumbi depot, which was a smaller version, which was located across from what's Mirada Bay today, um, just uh, north of Green Turtle Inn. Now, this is also a historic location for the fact that on uh, S September 2nd, 1935, when this rescue train comes down from the Homestead area to, to rescue not only the, uh, uh, the people who are living on the island, but also the World War, War, uh, World War I veterans who were building a solid bridge system, that living in bridge camps, or, or and sorry, living in, in work camps, building the, the solid bridge system, uh, on that day, uh, September 2nd, about 8.05, the train would come down and stop here at, at the Alamada Depot. About 25 minutes later, this 18-foot wall of water comes crashing over and destroys the railroad. Or, 40 miles of the railroad, yes, but also knocked over the train. And if you pan just to the right, the southbound lane of the overseas highway is where the train tracks had been established. And right here in front of us is where the train would be laying on its side after the 1935 hurricane. And that would be the last time that the train would, would ever run. Um, so that's going to uh, be, well, all right, before, before we wrap up. Now, Alamorada originally is just this community here on Upper Matacumbi Key. It eventually starts to, to grow and incorporate the other islands, Lower Matacumbi Key, Plantation Key, Windley Key. And then in, on December 31st, 1998, it's incorporated into the Village of Islands. And then from, so from this point forward, we now become Isla Mirada, a Village of Islands that incorporates a much larger area. But historically, this place right here, this is the original 15 acres, the town site of Isla Mirada, where it all really began. This, this fishing community really began to grow up around this area here. Now, uh, we're gonna wrap up today's Friday field trips and hopefully find a less noisy place next, next week. In, in the meantime, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Aaron says we have one highway in, in, in not much area, so good luck, but we'll try to find a, a quieter location, although some of the spots I have are sadly even closer to the, uh, to the road. Yeah, we, I see we have a question coming in. Jim would like to know, you mentioned the green turtle early on in your talk. How long has the green turtle been? Now, the green turtle, as the green turtle, um, opened up in 1947. Prior to that, it was called, oh my lord, this is, it's um, the Rustic Inn, which was built in the early 1930s by Berlin Felton. And in those days, the front of the building actually faced the old highway. Um, it was destroyed in 1935 hurricane, rebuilt as the, uh, as the Rustic Inn, and then purchased by, uh, by, um, Who owned the, why can't I think of, Sid and Roxy, <laughs> purchased by Sid and Roxy uh, in, in 1947, and then, and then it becomes the Green Turtle Inn. And what's interesting is, at, at some point, uh, after the 1935 hurricane, when the, uh, the highway that we know today becomes the actual highway used, they turned the Rustic Inn around so it would face, instead of the old highway, would start to face the new highway. So meaning Yes. And then when the highway changed, it flipped the face. Uh, yes. So when there was the railroad, all right. When the railroad was still running, the back of the green uh, of the rustic end faced the railroad, and the front of the green turtle end faced the old highway. Which, if you if you if you turn your camera left, or which is still what we call the old highway today, but that's the original path of State Road 4A that was known as the Overseas Highway. Um, 
And then after the hurricane in 1938, the Overseas Highway reopens, and at that point, we're using what's today the, uh, the path known as the Overseas Highway. All right. So um, on Monday, we'll be back at 1 o'clock with, uh, with marine bio or aquarium biologist Blake, Blake, uh, Blake Terry. I'm going to lose my mind today. Uh, he's going to talk some more about uh, our, our great aquariums and the fish. And uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll be here. Uh, we'll, we'll be at the museum talking more exhibits at 10 o'clock. And then next Friday, we will be doing a second or third version of Field Trip Fridays. In the meantime, on Wednesday night, we have a new uh, webinar uh, talking about, um, uh, it, it's a moat marine, a, a moat uh, biologist talking about the crustaceans and the, um, and the health of crustaceans. It can be really uh, interesting. We'll, we'll talk more about that as the uh, next week, as, as we get up to that date. Um, so thanks for tuning in, and we will see you again Monday.